In this session, we're going to discuss PKI Refresh and how Venify can help automate your PKI policies. So oftentimes the challenge is, especially when you're managing over 200 certificates when it comes to a PKI Refresh, is that you will have a root or intermediate root that's going to expire and need to replace that. Um, secondly, there is a challenge of distributing a new root or an intermediate to applications and or to hosts. Um, the next challenge is um, when you look at new security standards, such as going from a SHA-1 to SHA-2 or changing key links, those kinds of challenges oftentimes um, become um, quite difficult to address. And then it's also the ability to prevent an outage. If you have a root that's expiring or intermediate is expiring, you need to you know, make sure you find that before you do have an outage. And then also, how do you um, validate that transition is complete? So if you go, for example, to SHA-1 to SHA-2, how do we make sure that all SHA-1s have been replaced? And so the task that you need to do, um, use to address these challenges, you need to identify and detect all your certificates in the trust stores. Where's that root intermediate being used? Um, secondly, we need to have create policies as well as how to enforce those policies during replacement. Um, the way you do that is you have a very easy to use self-service portal so that users and administrators can make sure that they're using that new PKI appropriately. appropriately. Um, and then you want to have an automated workflow for the issuance, renewal, installation, validation of those certificates. You need to make sure that something is in place, that people check it, and it's authorized and in place correctly. And then finally, how do we validate that? We want to make sure that once we've created, created a new PKI, we've got the new routes down, then we want to make sure that um, we validate that and make sure it is all complete. So how can Venify help with this? So we look at it as three factors. There's protect, detect, and respond. On the protect side of things, we want to create visibility um, and establish, identify an inventory, and we do that via a discovery process. Um, secondly, under protect is the ability to establish policies. So the policies are we want to make sure that this old route is not being used, the new route is used throughout the enterprise. And then on the detection side, we want to enforce those policies. It's one thing to establish a policy under protect, but then when you need to detect, we want to make sure that those policies that we've defined are enforced. And the way we do that is through a self-service portal. We make sure that we make it, you know, once again, easy for users to get new certs, get the replacements. Um, it must all be done through a very easy to use portal or the users will, will push back and make you know difficult to make that change. And then finally, the ability to respond is you need to have an automated way of issuance, renewal, and installation of those certificates. Um, certainly, we can hand the certificate to the user through the portal, but oftentimes we want to make it even easier where we're actually doing the installation of the certificates for those users. And then finally, once again, is the ability to validate the completion. Make sure that everything we've um, established in the policies, we've enforced through the policies, and the self-service portal, make sure that everything has been validated and those new policies are in place. All right, so now let's look at a demonstration and we'll see exactly how this works in the uh, Trust Protection Platform. All right, so let's bring up this VM full screen. All right, so um, we talked about for PKI Refresh, protect, detect, and respond. So on the protect side, um, we talked about visibility and inventory via discovery. The way we do that is we have network discovery, and you will have your network discovery jobs. So for instance, I've created this example network discovery. Uh, if I go to details and targets, this is where I'm specifying the detail of this particular job. And you can have multiple jobs within the system. So if you want to discover different segments of the network, network, different business units. You can have these different jobs and each job can have its own settings. So I can specify if I want to do, you know, a range of IPs or if I just want to do a particular host or, you know, multiple hosts, however you want to do that. It's very, very flexible on how you're going to do the scanning and then certainly what ports, you know, by default, eight, you know, 443 and 8443 and 9443. So whatever port ranges you would like to specify, it's not just the standard 443 port. You save this, you can then then schedule it so you want to run them now but you also want to run these on a regular basis so we can identify any new certificates that have come into the environment.
And one of the most important things about the Vinify Trust Protection Platform Discovery is what we call placement rules. And so what placement rules do for us is they look at the certificates that are being discovered and we automatically place them into the inventory. The goal here is to make sure that we establish these policies and these placement rules one time and the user doesn't or an admin does not have to continually go into the system and do a bunch of manual work. We want everything to happen in an automated manner. So a certificate gets discovered, um, our system analyzes it, and we drop it into the appropriate inventory container. Okay. Now these containers are also called policies. And so one of the things we talked about, the ability to establish policies. So if we go over to our dashboard real quick, and let's look at our certificate dashboard. So this is especially important if you're looking at, um, we're focusing on PKI refresh and either changes to a PKI or a new PKI. But when we look at things such as you know, moving from SHA-1 to SHA-2, for example, um, I have a policy that says um, SHA-1 is not okay, SHA-2 is okay. So I can see that all of my certificates are SHA-2, so I'm good to go there. However, what if I have something from an unapproved CA, for example, an old root? I can hover and I've established this policy, I can see that I have one of my certificates that does not meet my policy. And these policies are configurable based on your organization so that the dashboard shows you exactly anything that's not outside of policy. Now I'm not showing the policy engine right now, we're trying to keep this demonstration very brief, but the policies are configured in the UI, they're very, very simple to establish, and the dashboard actually just shows you the results of the discovery based on your policy settings okay now the ability to detect is when we talk about the ability to enforce policies through that user portal so if we look at the inventory and we go to someone's certificates I see information about the certificates I see pending I saw anything that was urgent and I also see set steady state I can then say I want to get a new certificate now what happens is I want to get a certificate that's part of business unit ABC for example and you'll notice that it's asking for a nickname a description and then we also have metadata or custom fields where I can enter a specific data there I choose next and now you'll notice that all I'm asking for is a common name and the OU we're not asking for things such as the signing algorithm we're not asking for organization the city the state all of that very manual data that's necessary when you create a certificate manually we're not we're not required to get that data because that's all enforced via policy so so once again, it makes it very, very easy for the user because they only need to enter two sets of data, hit the next button, and they're finished. They don't have to generate CSR, they don't have to generate key material, and so if you look at moving from SHA-1 to SHA-2, we're automatically going to give that user a brand new or a replacement certificate moving from SHA-1 to SHA-2, really, really simple. Okay, and then the last piece is the ability to do automated issuance, renewal, and installation um, under the respond category. So once again, this is making it simple that if I had something that was SHA-1 um, SHA and I needed to modify that, for example, so I could click on this certificate, and assuming that this were a SHA-1 certificate, all I really would need to do is say renew now. And if I click the renew now button, what would happen is, based on my policy settings, we would generate new CSR, generate new key material, and we would get that new certificate from the CA and move it from SHA-1 over to SHA-2. So it makes it very, very simple for the users. Once again, we want to make it simple for them so there's no pushback and they want to move from SHA-1 to SHA-2. All right, and the last piece is what we call validation. So there is a report, there's also dashboards that show us if there's anything that still hasn't moved off of SHA-1 over to SHA-2. And remember we talked about the discovery processes, not meant just to run one time. We run them on a regular basis. If we find anything that SHA-1, it would show in the dashboard. I could then click on that, and then I would say, I want to change this over to a SHA-2 certificate, for example. So the point there is validation shows you anything that's outside of policy, even as we've begun the remediation process, we then have the ability to fix things. All right, so in summary, PKI refresh, either changes to a PKI or a new PKI. The ability to protect, detect, and respond. We want visibility. We want to establish a policy. 
We want to enforce policies. We want to have a user portal. We want to do automated issuance, renewal, and installation. And we want to validate that the entire process has been completed successfully. All right. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, please contact us at Vinify. We're happy to help in any way we can. Thank you very much.